Today's reading is from John 20, verses 19 through 31. Jesus appears to the disciples. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors were locked where the disciples were, for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So when the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my fingers <clears throat> Pardon me. Put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side. I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet come to believe. The purpose of this book. Now Jesus did many other signs, John tells us, in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book, but they are written so that you may continue to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. This is the word of our Lord. Let us pray. <clears throat> Guiding God, send your Holy Spirit upon the meditation of your word, that it may serve to show us the path of life and lead us into your presence where there is fullness of joy. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. I was like, look, it looks better than before. Uh, Getting ready for Texas. <laughs> yes, I, I guess uh, Deb Lunan knows that I am moving to Texas, so that's why, you know, she, she wanted to wear this hat this morning. Uh, I'm not going to just uh, wear all the time, but just at least at the beginning of our service, uh, let you know uh, I can be funny as well. <laughs> As a matter of fact, last Sunday, uh, one of our church members and suggested what I would preach this morning. And she said there was a pastor uh, who just got up and uh, stand here and uh, said, say what he's going to preach. And he said uh, that he's going to uh, preach on sin. And then he said, don't do it. <laughs> and amen. And then he sat down. That's the shortest sermon that you could hear uh, in any worship service. Well, I thought I would do the same thing this morning. That I would say, this, you know, uh, 
I'm going to talk about sin and don't do it and amen and that's it. But when I think about what today's gospel writer, John, would say to us and to me, uh, real joy is not from any joke or funny face, but from the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So that's why I'm going to talk about how we can be joyful. How can we be full of happiness and joy, not just for today, but every day. Um, last Sunday, we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. But have you ever thought about how many people believe in Jesus? We say, uh, the population of the world is over 70 billion, but according to the statistics, only 31% of the people believe in Jesus. 31. In other words, 69% of people in the world do not believe in Jesus. What about those who are living in the time of Jesus? Do you think it was much easier than, than us, you know, believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ? The Bible tells us even the disciples had a hard time to believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So today's scripture, John chapter 20, tells us what happened to the disciples. After Jesus was risen from the dead. Verse 19 and the following tells us what the disciples did after John rose from the dead. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, the doors were locked where the disciples were for fears of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. When Jesus was arrested, his disciples were almost arrested with Jesus. That's why the disciples met in secret behind the locked doors and in fear. Sunday night after Jesus rose from the dead, Christ decided to visit his disciples who were filled of fear and just got together and didn't know what to do for their future. Interestingly, one of Jesus' disciples, Thomas, was not there. So after they saw the Jesus, they brag about what they see, and, and they told Thomas that they have seen the Lord. But Thomas, Thomas said that, unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in his side, I would not believe. And verse 24 and the following tells us how Thomas comes to believe in the resurrection of Jesus. It says, a week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands, reach out your hands and put it in my side. Do not doubt and believe. Thomas answered him, my Lord, my God. What does that mean? When he met Jesus after his resurrection, he felt that 
his heart strangely warmed in John Wesley's word, and then he confessed that now he believes in Jesus as the Lord and God himself. After showing his bruised body to the disciples, and Jesus says, as the Father has sent me, so I send. What does this mean? At the first meeting after his resurrection, Jesus commissions the disciples to be a living witnesses to the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The writer of John's Gospel says in verse 22, when Jesus had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. Just as, just as God has breathed the Spirit into Adam, so Jesus is infusing the disciples with this resurrection power. Why do you think Jesus told the disciples to receive the Holy Spirit? It's because if they wanted to be the witness to the resurrection of Jesus, think about it. Many people laugh at them because they have never heard, they have never seen anybody risen from the dead. It is nonsense. It doesn't make any sense. The question that we need to ask is then, how can we receive the Holy Spirit? In Acts chapter 2, verse 38, Peter told the people uh, at the day of Pentecost, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ so that your sins may be forgiven and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peter says that when we acknowledge that we are sinners and in need of forgiveness and be baptized, God will give us the gift of the Holy Spirit. Next question that we need to ask ourselves is, have we received the Holy Spirit? If somebody asks you this kind of question, what would you say to them? How do we know whether we have received the Holy Spirit or not? 1 Corinthians 12, the Paul says, Therefore I want you to understand that no one speaking by the Spirit of God ever says, let Jesus be cursed. And no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. In other words, unless we have the Holy Spirit, we cannot confess that Jesus is the Lord. The resurrection of Jesus is the heart of the Christian message. Christianity and faith, the faith, the church are founded on the faith that Jesus is risen from the dead. So in other words, if we do not believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we cannot say that we are Christian. How can we convince other people who have a hard time to believe in the resurrection of Jesus? I'm sure you have tried 
many times in your life to talk with your friends and your neighbors and your family members. At face value, the resurrection of Jesus seems impossible to those who have no faith. It doesn't make sense. It is nonsense. It is not possible at all. But let's consider something easy to understand, like caterpillars transforming into butterflies. Did you know that the caterpillar transforms into butterfly in about two to five weeks on average? When they are in a caterpillar stage, so if someone just tells them that they will be butterfly in a few weeks, do you think they, the caterpillars can believe what someone is talking about? One day they're going to fly? We may not fully understand the mystery of the resurrection of Jesus, but the resurrection of Jesus was possible because of the mighty God. The resurrection of Jesus is a reminder that there is nothing that God cannot do. Whether we believe it or understand it or not, that's what God has done for us. The question that we need to ask is, then why do you think Jesus rose from the dead you know, and said, you know, this raising you know, God plays a joke just to devil, you know, raising Jesus from the dead. We believe that the God created the world and sent Jesus to be his son as our savior. And yet the son of God was crucified as a criminal on the cross. Does that make sense to God and to us? No, God is almighty God. God is the creator. God sent his son and people killed him and as a criminal. But when we read the Bible, Jesus didn't do anything wrong. So it is completely, Jesus didn't do anything wrong and he should not be crucified. So Jesus is raised from the dead to vindicate that Jesus did not die as a consequence of his own sin, but for something else. So we say Jesus died not for his own wrongdoings, but for all human beings. To bring us redemption so that we can reconnect with our God, Almighty God. Christ's redemption is not just simply vindication of God, but also gives us the hope that we can live with the Lord forever. Christ is the first fruit of our redemption at the end of time. That is why Paul says in Thessalonians chapter 4, therefore encourage one another with these words. The early Christians believed that Jesus would be back Maybe even tonight, maybe tomorrow, very soon. But the people, beloved ones, died. They couldn't understand why Jesus didn't come 
and then their loved ones passed away. What's going to happen when Jesus would be back? Paul says that when Jesus would return, he will raise the dead. There will be a resurrection of those who have passed. That's what Paul is talking about, and that's what we believe. If we take a step back and think about it, resurrection of Jesus can sound ridiculous. It's nonsense. However, we know that when Jesus was risen from the dead, it was the greatest news the disciples ever had. When the disciples saw that Jesus rose from the dead, the scripture tells us they were overjoyed. Our physical death can often seem so permanent. But can you imagine what joy it will be at the resurrection of those who have passed away. I can't imagine what it will be like when Jesus would come in the resurrection of those who passed rise from the dead. I just listed the names of our beloved one since I began to serve Swift Memorial. If I miss anybody, just after service, please let me know. David Klotzbach, Jean Richards, Carl Wilson, Joni Cahoon, Bob Yeager, Ross Peck, Tom and Nancy Armstrong, Betty Prouty, Alice Cooper, James Kmet, Judith Frost, Sandra Knight, Ha Kyung Jo Kim, El Marsh, Paul Karins, Ben Miller, Bert Boldly, Wayne Tell, Cliff Mary Lou White, Herb Ellis, and as the cock. All of them are not a member of a church, but they are somehow related with our congregation. The resurrection of Jesus is not an easy thing to believe in. However, let us listen to what Jesus said to Thomas in verse 29. Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Although we have not seen Jesus in person, when the Holy Spirit is with us, we can believe in the resurrection of Christ and be witnesses to Christ's resurrection. This is why we pray, come Holy Spirit, and fill our heart with never-ending joy and knowing that Jesus died and risen for you and me. Amen. Let us pray. God of signs and wonders, you have revealed to us that Jesus Christ is your Son and our Savior. You raised him from the dead. Strengthen our faith, fill our heart 
with everlasting joy. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray.